Today we're going to talk about how to put more color into a neutral colored subject. So let's get started. So before we really get started, the first thing I'm going to do is take some water down Naples yellow and just block out the spots that I want to keep light. Not necessarily white, but light. And I'm using this with a 16 flat brush. The paper is Arsh Cold Press. And the, um, the paper, I think, is like an 8 by 8 inch square. I love to work in a square. But what I wanted to first bring up is just that um, I haven't been painting as much as I normally do. And there have been some life changes here. And one of them is that we've got this fantastic puppy. And the reason for getting a puppy was we've rescued many dogs over the years. And, you know, they come with a variety of health issues or behavioral issues. And this time we decided that we would adopt a young dog with no behavioral issues that we knew of. And most importantly, that the dog is healthy because we've said goodbye to too many dogs in recent times and we did not want to say goodbye quickly. So this is my first painting of Callie, Callie the Collie. And in order to remember her name, it's just Collie, but with an A in the middle. She's a rough Collie and she's what's called a tricolor. There's also a smooth Collie. A smooth Collie has short fur. But she's a big, she's going to be a big fluffy dog and she's going to be lovely. So I'm making my value dabs on the left. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at only what's light and dark. I'm only looking at value shapes. But anyway, the purpose of this video was to talk about how can you infuse more color into a neutral subject. The reason I say this is a neutral subject is because she's black and brown and white. There's really, she's not very colorful, <laughs> let's put it that way. Colorful personality, but not colorful to the eye. So what can you do to infuse more color? And what I like to do is what I call a color value swap out. Now I'm not doing it yet. I am trying to keep my colors as bright as I can keep them. So I'm not mixing um, complementary colors. I'm being careful to keep my colors as bright as, as I can. Although I don't think anything is uh, coming out of a tube. Everything has been mixed to some degree. So I put in some lights, I put in some mediums. Now I'm gonna put in my darkest darks. And they'll get darker later, but I need something to go by. And she is mostly dark. That's the primary shape in this particular photograph is that dark, you know, the black that happens on her, the black and the black of her mask. And I'm not painting with black at all. The black is actually alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and a burnt sienna. That is one of my favorite triads to use for a dark substitute for black because black would be very dull. So that's one way to infuse more color into your paintings is don't uh, not, not to use a gray or a uh, black, but to mix colors together to neutralize them and get the color value and shade that you want. So, so far, I am not doing what I said the I would do in this video, which is infuse a lot of color because uh, I want to get my value relationships perfect or as close to perfect as I can make them before adding more color. Uh, the other thing that's happening here is, um, darn it, if I didn't forget, I said about color value swap out. Oh, well, it'll, it'll come back to me. It always comes back to me. So looking at these big value shapes, using as few strokes as possible, because that's my preference. I like I like paintings that look like they're they're painted. Uh, the, I know, now I just remember what it was I wanted to say was I'm not matching the colors in my painting to the photograph. That's never my goal. My goal is to match the value to the photograph. So I want to make sure that if something's dark in the photograph, I'm going to make it dark. If it's mid-toned, I'm going to make it mid-toned, but I'm not matching color. I'm not a matchy-matchy painter. Uh, I have found when I do matchy-matchy paintings that they come out looking very accurate and very dull, and that's not what I want to do. And this is just a personal preference of style. So now I've got her blocked in pretty good. And so I thought, all right, now it's time to see what can I do with color. And there was the first spot, you see. I picked up some cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is gonna be the same value as the darks that I put in. And I pick that up on my paintbrush and I drop it in. I'm dropping it in in the dark areas of her fur. One thing that's gonna work really well, one of the reasons that I picked cerulean blue is that I, I it's almost like I see it. I, I think I'm imagining it, but I often will put cerulean blue on the nose or in the fur of an animal that's black 
because I think it's in there. I think it's reflected light, but I think there's actually blue in there. And the value is exactly correct. So that's one of the ways that I'm going about it. I look at my shape and I decide what to throw in or drop in a pure pigment. And in this case, I decided cerulean blue was the pigment that I wanted to put in there. Now I'm adding a little bit of color with a little bit of probably like a burnt sienna and a little bit of, um, it's actually a little bit of some kind of orange that I have. I think it's called pyrrole orange or something. It's quite bright. It's from Daniel Smith. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the, uh, that, that, that showed up. There's very few spots on, on, in the photograph and on the dog that are sort of orange-ish or a light orange or pinky. Pink, yeah. And so I wanted that to be in there. Now I'm going in. I'm pretty heavy-handed here with cerulean blue. It's being dropped in there. And the other reason that cerulean blue is going to work nicely is because it is a complement. Blue is always going to be a complementary color to orange. And so that's going to work well together. And that's what I decided to drop in for the background was just some cerulean blue. So look at your different values. And when you get your value relationships correct, drop in a color that correlates to that value. And you can have more colorful paintings overall. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mats for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.